Hi friends, I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Today I'm going to share with you more about my ancestry. I have seen a few comments asking if one of my grandparents or great grandparents was white since my DNA results show I am 75% African and 25% European. I decided to show you this family tree which provides a breakdown of me, my parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and great-great-grandparents. I have a detailed family tree on Ancestry.com. It's something I have been interested in for about 20 years now, and I also have other family members who have done a lot of research on our ancestry. This is going to be a fun video too because I'm going to use the life story feature from Ancestry.com to give you some of the background about some of my grandparents. Life Story is a cool feature that gathers data you collect while researching your family tree and then puts that data into a story for each person on your family tree. So let's get started. So here I am in the middle. I took an Ancestry DNA test about seven years ago, if you're not familiar with my channel. It's been updated a few times since then. The last update showed my ethnicity estimate breaks down to 75% African and 25% European. Now let's talk about how companies like Ancestry.com determine the ethnicity estimates. By the way guys, this is not sponsored. This is not a sponsored video. It's just information that I've researched on my own and I wanted to share with you all. So this information was taken directly from the Ancestry.com website. It says using autosomal testing, Ancestry DNA surveys over 700,000 locations in your DNA using your saliva sample. Your ethnicity estimates show places in the world where high concentrations of this ethnicity are typically found. They measure and analyze a person's entire genome at over 700,000 locations. During the testing process, each DNA sample is held to a quality standard of at least a 98% call rate. Then they compare your DNA to one of the most comprehensive and unique collections of DNA samples from people around the world to identify DNA similarities. As their database of DNA samples continues to grow, you could receive updates with new information. My ethnicity estimates were updated a few times over over the last several years because as they gather more information from more people they're able to match me better to those specific areas. The Ancestry DNA test is an autosomal DNA test. Autosomal testing allows you to find family across all lines in your family tree. That means both men and women can take the test and the results are not limited to just the direct maternal or paternal lines. Your autosomal chromosomes carry genetic information from both your parents and that information is passed down through the generations. The Ancestry DNA test looks at your more recent DNA history from a few hundred to a thousand years ago as opposed to a matrilineal or patrilineal test that looks at DNA from many thousands of years ago to determine where your mother's 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 or your father father's father may have descended. We do plan to do matrilineal and patrilineal DNA tests soon, so make sure you come back for that. Now let's take a look at this family tree. My mother is on the left. She has not taken an Ancestry DNA test, however, her mother did. I, of course, matched to her mother. In addition, I'm able to prove that my maternal great-grandfather was indeed my grandmother's father because my DNA matches to my maternal grandmother's half-siblings on her father's side. I know that's a little bit much, but you know, I think you get the point. That means we only had my great-grandfather in common. If my maternal great-grandfather was not my grandmother's father, 
then I would not have matched to my grandmother's paternal half-siblings. I also matched to my mother's father's relatives who have also taken the test. Not that I had any doubt, but just in case someone asked, my DNA matching to my maternal grandfather's relatives confirms that my maternal grandfather was indeed my mother's father. The men listed on my family tree as my father, grandfathers, and great-grandfathers have been confirmed through DNA testing. In other words, my 25% European ancestry is not due to my grandmother's having affairs. Now my father is shown on my right. He did take the ancestry DNA test about six years ago. He of course matched to me as my father. His results also showed him as 75% African and 25% European, just like my results although we do show different sub percentages. For example, his results showed him with 23% Nigerian DNA, whereas my results showed me with 18% Nigerian DNA. Both my mother's side and father's side have a long family history in Missouri. Most of my grands were born in Missouri if you weren't aware, Missouri became a slave state in 1820. However, there were slaves in Missouri prior to 1820. They were brought in by slave masters from other states and they were not given freedom even though Missouri was not yet noted as a slave state. In 1860, Missouri had about 114,900 slaves which was about 10% of the state's population. Now, the state auditor's report in 1860 put a price tag of $44,181,912 on those enslaved people. Missouri did abolish slavery on January 11th, 1865. And by the way, that was about three weeks before the United States Congress proposed the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery. This is important information to know in order to understand my family's history in Missouri. Okay, I'm going to go through my mother's line first and talk about my grins from her side. Again, the purpose of this video is to discuss how I inherited 25% European ancestry when all of my grandparents and great-grandparents were listed as black. I grew up knowing all four of my grandparents. My maternal grandmother, Dorothy, who is my last living grandparent, is my only grandparent who took the ancestry DNA test. Her results show she is 91% African, 8% European, and 1% Indigenous American. Here's what the Ancestry Life Story feature shows for Grandma Dorothy. This information is gathered from records such as birth certificates, marriage licenses, death records, etc. I can also manually edit the details if I choose and I can ignore suggestions that Ancestry gives me about people in my tree. Now, obviously, I am familiar with Grandma Dorothy's story since she has been in my life since I was a baby. Grandma was the youngest of several children. She was a part of a blended family and her siblings were much older than her. She had one brother who had the same mom and dad and several half siblings from her mom's and dad's sides. Grandma Dorothy's mother died when she was very young, about six, so she was raised by her father and also her older siblings helped. Here's a picture of my Grandma Dorothy's mother, Lorene. She has African looking features and based on the fact that Grandma Dorothy is 91% African, I would say Lorene had a high percentage of African as well. However, she definitely had other ethnicities in her, which I will show you in just a minute. 
Now, I do not have a picture of my great-grandfather Thomas, Grandma Dorothy's father. However, let's take a look at his life story. The gallery page stores saved documents such as birth records, death records, census reports, etc. From Thomas's census report, I can see him listed as Negro Black. In historical records like this, Black people are listed as Negro, Black, Colored, or Mulatto. Negro, Black, or Colored normally mean they appear to be what a typical American would consider Black. This does not mean the person is full Black. I would have been listed as Negro, Black, or Colored back then too, but we all know my DNA shows 25% European ancestry. Obviously, they did not have ancestry DNA tests back then to determine every person's ethnicity estimates. However, again, based upon Grandma Dorothy's high African percentage and the fact that great-grandfather Thomas is listed as Negro Black in the census reports, I have added a B meaning Black. Note, if I did not have a picture of my grandparent, I added a letter representing what the census report showed as their race, either B for black or M for mulatto. Okay, so I use the term mulatto here only because the census reports also use that term to identify the race of the individual. So let's take a look at what mulatto means. According to the Merriam-Webster's definition of mulatto, it is usually an offensive word, but it means the first generation offspring of a black person and a white person. It could also mean a person of mixed white and black ancestry. Note here that Grandma Dorothy's parents and all four of her grandparents were listed in census reports as black including great-grandfather Thomas's parents, Caroline and Ike. Lorene's parents are also listed as black on the census reports, but there is another layer that should be considered there. Since we are looking at how I inherited 25% European ancestry without having a white grandparent or great-grandparent, I think this additional layer about my great-grandmother Lorene's family should be mentioned. Several years ago, we discovered there was a book about our cave family. The cave family is Lorene's family. The book was written by the son of a former slave owner in Missouri. In the book, Lorene's maternal grandmother, Emma, was described as an Indian looking woman with long, almost straight hair and high cheekbones. However, Emma's looks could have been contributed to some European ancestry as well. This is not uncommon. Emma was my Grandma Dorothy's great-grandmother. Remember, Grandma Dorothy's DNA results showed 8% European and 1% Native American ancestry. Based on that info, Emma could have very well had a high percentage of Native American ancestry, but she most likely also had European ancestry. Even though only six of the 28 grandparents I have listed show as mulatto on census reports, several others may have also had some percentage of mixed ancestry. The traditional definition of mulatto back then was someone with one white parent and one black parent. If they had a white grandparent or great grandparent, they were more likely to be listed as Negro, Black, or Colored instead of Mulatto. Now let's take a look at my mother's father's lineage to see where I may have inherited some of my mixed ancestry. There is a lot of mixed ancestry in my Grandpa Chester's lineage. My great-grandfather Edgar is listed in the census reports as Mulatto. He is Grandpa Chester's father. His mother, Julia, is also listed as mulatto, but his father, Carrie, is listed as black. My grandpa Chester's siblings came in different shades, some lighter, some darker. 
some with looser curled hair than others and some even with lighter eyes. However, both of his parents are listed as mulatto on census reports. My great grandfather Edgar's mother was probably closer to white than black and that's why her children were listed as mulatto. They probably looked mulatto and thus were labeled as such on the census reports. By the time Edgar was a grown man, however, the 1940 census report listed him as Negro or Black. Edgar was 46 in 1940. It also listed his wife, Mariah, as Negro Black and all their children as Black as well. What I discovered is earlier census reports showed mulatto for mixed looking people but later census reports mostly showed them as Negro Black unless they had a known white parent. Mariah's mother, Caroline, was listed as Black in the 1880 census. However, based on her picture with her children, it looks like she also had some mixed ancestry. Mariah's father, Taylor, was listed as Mulatto in the census his father, Lucy, was also listed as mulatto, and his father is reported to be a white slave owner. Lucy and her son, Taylor, were listed as mulatto slaves. I will include that slave report on the screen. So as you can see on my mother's side, there is mixed ancestry. Although she shows no white grandparents or great grandparents, her parents were listed on the census reports as black, Two of her four grandparents were listed as mulatto on census reports when they were kids, but they were later listed as black when they became adults. My mother also had two great grandparents who were listed in the census reports as mulatto. Out of my mother's 14 four parents I have listed on this tree, only four were identified as mulatto on census reports. Let's move on to my dad's ancestors. Like I mentioned earlier, my dad has taken the ancestry DNA test. His ethnicity estimates shows he is 75% African and 25% European, just like me. 22% of my dad's European ancestry comes from Scotland or Ireland. My dad's parents have both passed away, but when they were living, they always considered themselves black. My grandfather Granville's parents' names were Lafayette and Willie Pearl. The pictures of the two of them are shown on the screen. Lafayette and his father Richard and his mother Bertha were all listed as black in the 1910 census report. Willie Pearl is listed as black in the 1930 census report. Willie Pearl's parents, Lizzie and Lewis, were also listed as black. Lewis was listed as black in the 1900 census report, and so were his parents, Robert and Martha. Lewis's wife, Lizzie, also lived in the household and was listed as black as well. Willie Pearl had a Scottish maiden name, Lawson. This is interesting because the majority of my dad's and my European ancestry comes from Scotland and Ireland. Historically, enslaved black people took on the last names of the slave owners after emancipation. So this led me to track the Scottish last name, which we will get into in just a few minutes. Lewis's parents, Robert and Martha, were born during slavery. Robert was born in 1838 and Martha was born in 1847. The two got married in 1866, one year after emancipation. In the 1880 census, Robert Lawson is listed as a farmhand. He is listed as not being able to read or write, and he never attended school. Robert's wife, Martha, was listed as a housekeeper. She also never attended school and could not read or write. This is typical for enslaved people as it was against the law to teach any enslaved black or mulatto person how to read or write. Now here's an interesting piece of information I was able to gather while doing my research. Robert Lawson, who is my father's great-great-grandfather, fought in the Civil War. 
He was a part of the 62nd Colored Infantry. He fought for the Union Army. So I started my search to find how my family is connected to the Lawson surname. While searching, I came across the 1860 slave census for Callaway County in the Bourbon Township in Missouri. This census lists the slave owners' first and last names, the number of people they enslaved, the ages of the enslaved people, their sex, and their color, whether they were black or mulatto. There are numerous slave owners on the list with Scottish, Irish surnames. Well, it is true that they were indentured servants. However, they were not assigned to be indentured servants for a lifetime, as was the case for black enslaved people and their children. The indentured servitude ended pretty early on in America for the Scottish and Irish. They eventually were identified just as white Americans. And in America, there was a separation between races based upon color. So there are numerous slave owners on the list with Scottish Irish surnames. I counted 28 Scottish Irish surnames listed as slave owners in the 1860 slave census for Callaway County in the Bourbon Township alone. In fact, there were more Scottish Irish slave owners listed than there were slave owners from any other European origins. So I have a list here of the names that I confirmed were of Scottish or Irish descent. Jolly, Holiday, Price, Hume, Scott, McClelland, Carney, Nevins, Johnson, West, Henley, Moore, Ewing, Glasgow, Fanley, McKinney, Gibbs, McClure, Miller, Allen, Houston, Craig, Renfro, McDonald, McKim, Finley, Duncan, and Smith. Again, all of these names were listed as slave owners in the 1860 slave census for Callaway County. So as shown in this presentation, I have no recent white ancestors. Let's do a summary of my 16 great, great grandparents. Caroline was an enslaved black woman born around 1860 in Missouri. Her mother Alice was also an enslaved black woman born around 1830 in Virginia. Ike was a black man born during slavery around 1850. Della is listed as a black woman born in 1877. Both of her parents were born during slavery as well. Her father was listed as black. Her mother was listed as mulatto. Albert was a black man born around 1869 and his parents spent most of their lives in slavery. Julia was born during slavery and is listed as mulatto. Carrie is listed as a black man born during slavery. Caroline is listed as a black woman born during slavery. Taylor is listed as a mulatto man born during slavery. Gertrude is listed as a mulatto woman born in 1879. Both her parents were born during slavery as well and were listed as black in the 1900 census. Ferris is listed as mulatto and so were both of his parents. His parents were also born during slavery. Carrie is listed as black in some reports, but as mulatto in others. Her parents were born during slavery. Her dad was listed as mulatto and her mother as black. Frank is listed as black in some reports and mulatto in others. His parents were also born during slavery. His father was listed as mulatto and his mother as black. Bertha is listed as black. Her parents were born during slavery and were also listed as black. Richard is listed as black. His parents were born during slavery and also were listed as black. Lizzie is listed as black. I do not have any information on her parents as of yet.
Lewis is listed as black and so were his parents who were born during slavery. So as you can see, none of my 16 great great grandparents were white. Some of them were mulatto, but they were often listed either as black and sometimes mulatto on census reports. I hope this helps to bring clarity to how I inherited 25% European ancestry, even when I don't have any recent white ancestors. I have several ancestors with mixed ancestry that came through slavery. Most of my European ancestry is Scottish-Irish. However, the 1860s slave census for Callaway County shows there were numerous slave owners with Scottish-Irish surnames. That is the county that both my mother's side and father's side descended from. Those records agree with our recorded and oral history that our Scottish-Irish ancestry appears to have come through the relationship these slave owners had with those they enslaved. In any case, it's very fascinating information. I think everyone should understand their history and I am glad I will be able to pass this down to my children and then they can pass it down to their children. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button and consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell as well so that you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. I hope you all have a fabulous Friday. See you soon.